Hi, I'm Andreas. I'm the community manager here at Full Control. Today I'd like to show you the second dev diary and uh, I'm going to start off with showing some of the menus we have for the new Space Hulk Ascension game. Uh, and I'll also uh, go into a new functionality called uh, Flash Missions. And then later Tim will show off some gameplay of the game, so enjoy. Um, to begin with, I'm just going to start a game. And then uh, you actually get to a menu where you get to choose the three different different chapters we currently have in Space Shock Ascension. So you can get to be the awesome Ultramarines or the Blood Angels and Space Wolves. And you can see what their, their chapter focus is, which would be either ranged or they're versatile going both ways or melee. Uh, right now the unique trait for the Ultramarines would be the they have the Cyclone missiles. Uh, the Blood Angels is not really decided yet, so none at the moment. And then, of course, the Frost Weapons for the Space Wolves. We're going to go with the Ultramarines. Uh, so here we get to ch choose the different difficulty for the game. Um, so easy, you basically get, when, when your squad dies, you get everyone back without losing uh, any of the skills that they gained. Uh, but you can't really unlock the achievements at the same time. Um, for normal, you will get the normal difficulty. Uh, so basically, when you uh, lose your Terminator, you will get them replaced with uh, equal levels. When you take it to hard, it's just taking it a step further. So you get your squad members back, but you get them back as rookies. So they lose all levels. And if you're really hardcore, you're going to go for the impossible, which basically is a hardcore mode where uh, there's permadeath. So uh, that's, of course, the one I'm going to go for. So this is basically just a campaign select map. And currently we have three different campaigns. We have the Spaceful campaign, and we have the Blood Angel campaign, and the new uh, Hammer and Anvil uh, Ultramarine campaign. So now we go to the mission tree, uh, where we get a, an introduction to the whole uh, mission. Uh, this is your starting point, and uh, when I use my cheats, I can open up all of the, the rest of the missions. So this is basically the whole structure uh, of, of the Space Hawk. Um, and the way it's structured is that there, you can choose a mission, uh, you can branch out in different directions, but you can't go back. But we introduced a uh, new functionality in between called Flash Missions. Uh, so basically you can take uh, a mission in between, and it's kind of a gamble. And for every time you start a game, it will be a different mission. So you don't really know what's to come there. It could, it could be an ambush. It could be simply be that you find a, a relic item. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, replayability by adding this feature to the game. As you can see from the screen as well, uh, we have the loadout here. Uh, which, uh, but it's still being, uh, it's still work in progress. We're still fixing some features there. But uh, in that screen, you'll be able to set up the whole uh, squad load up uh, with abilities and equipment. You can give your uh, squad the different names for the members, and you can also um, put in reserves if you want that too. If you want to swap out some of the some of the the squad, so. Um, from here on, uh, Tim will show you some of the gameplay that I'm sure that you've been waiting for. Hi, my name is Tim Bergerfoss and I'm a level designer here at Full Control. And today we're going to talk a little about the gameplay from uh, Space Arc Ascension and uh, a little of the Flash mission. Um, yeah, and some of the features uh, you will see will also be in work in progress, so bear in mind. Uh, yeah, so let's first talk about uh, deployment. I have already have two terminators out here that I've deployed, but I need to deploy three more. It has a, every level has a minimum amount of uh, terminators that you need to deploy. So let's just put these guys out of here. You can choose whichever one you want to deploy. So we go. Now I can start playing in this level. And this circus you can see uh, around the terminators are the perception range and it works like a, like a radar. So everything outside the circus will not uh, be noticeable. Uh, you will not see the in steers how they will how they will go anything. It will only be noticeable when they are inside this. And it's and if it, it is in the in the visible range of the terminals, you will also see which kind of in steer it is. 
but if you don't have the view free from it, uh, yeah, we will only see some kind of effect that something is approaching you. So let's talk about the firing modes here. Yeah, so the firing modes here, we have different choices. So in this case, you have the plasma convolter. We're going to talk a little about that later. But the firing modes on this one is the original bolt to fire. And uh, that's just a usual shot. And we also have the aimed fire, and that will give you a 10% increase of hitting the enemy. And we also have the plasma shot, but that will we also talk about later. So let's just try to kill this one with the aim shot. Oh, missed him. Let's, see, let's do a plasma shot then. Yeah, that worked good. Uh, another thing that is pretty crucial in this game is that you never get get the gene stealers on your back, because that will be a definite kill for uh, yeah for the gene stealer. It also goes for the sides. So let's just uh, yeah show that. Yeah, so you see, so that will always happen from the back. And here we can see uh, the blips. So here we can see. There is something that approaches you, but you don't know what, what kind of insteeler it is. I'm also going to show you some melee combat here. Uh, we have a yin steel in front of me, and let's see here if we have a successful hit on him. So here, yeah, there was a lucky one. Uh, the melee combat is a very risky one to do with yin stealers. It will probably the most time kill you. So. It should be avoidable. Another thing that's also new, uh, we have evolved uh, the point of view camera. So you can either make it bigger or you can get uh, uh, easier. You can get a heat vision so you can see whatever, whatever the gene stealers are in front of you. You can also hide it if you, if you don't like it. That's probably all for the basic combat here. So in next scene, I'm going to show you some of the, the new weapons. So let's go over that scene. Yeah, so let's go through some weapons here. Uh, we have one new weapon here that is called the Combi Melta. And it's a combination of the Storm Bolter and uh, a Melta weapon. And the Melta fire works like kind of like a shotgun. And uh, have a very short range, but it has 100% hit chance, so it's very effective. I should try it out here. See, uh, we can kill this one also. No, let's just go for another melter shot. Yeah, very good close combat one. Uh, we also have another new one that is called uh, the plasma combi bolter. That is a uh, storm bolter combined with a yeah with a plasma fire. The plasma fire works in that way that if you have a successful hit in the first one, it will take it will continues to kill the one behind and if it's that successful it, it will try to kill the one behind that. So let's just try that. Yeah, that worked. Looks really cool, I think. Another weapon we also have is the, the Cyclone Missile Launcher, which is equipped with uh, two kind of missiles, actually. It's equipped with the Frag Missile, that is... Um, yeah, in area damage missile that has the chance to kill a lot of heat stealers. The another one is the crack missiles, uh, and it is the only missile that can kill the brood lords. It takes five damage, and uh, yeah, that's what's how much health the brood lords have. So let's try to kill it here. Yeah, it was successful. A lot of successful hits here. <laughs> Another thing that we also have uh, is the equipment. That's also a new stuff. So the equipment goes from proximity mines to raiders. And um, we also have uh, some shields that could prevent you from gene stealer movement. So let's just try a uh, proximity mine here. And this will also give me a chance to escape from these gene stealers. So now I don't have to waste and stand here and use overwatch and have a chance to escape instead. Let's try to escape here to exit. Yeah, 
So this mission objective is that I need to exit with three or more terminators. So I win the objective if I exit with three terminators, but the other ones will not survive. So I need to exit with all of them for everyone to survive. Um, we also have what's new in the flash missions is also that you have treasure chests, which you can gain a, a combat boost or an EXP boost, or maybe some permanent uh, upgrade for your weapons. It's called the relic weapons. And it will either give you a percentage hit increasing, uh, and uh, yeah, or it will give more damage. Yeah, it depends. Let's see what we get here. Just. So you found melee combat bonus. So in the next mission, I will have plus 19% to hit with my melee weapons. And that goes for all the terminators. So it's that's really good. And um, yeah, let's just try to exit there. See if we can win this mission. This is, where is the last one? There he is, <laughs> hiding in the corner. So in every flash mission you will have the chance to find a treasure chest that will give you something. So it's worth to explore those levels and it will also yeah, give you a lot of stuff. Yeah. And this is the, yeah, the windscreen and here you can see what, what kind of item I found. See, I uh, can also see the total kits. Um, so Lush is here with kill free, and he also gets EXP. So he gets 10 EXP for each gene stealer it killed. Uh, and we also got the objective completed, so everyone gets, uh, gets the 100 EXP. Yeah, and that's probably all from the Flash missions. I hope you enjoy this dev diary, and uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs>